Hello and welcome back. Uh, in this exercise, we're going to be working with these things called permutations. Um, we all have experience with them. We use them all the time as pin numbers uh, to access bank accounts or, or what have you, uh, email passwords, passwords for your office computer. These are all examples of, of permutation, different ways that we can order values given some selection of, of values to choose from. So if we look at, uh, here our first example, we're gonna look at pin numbers. Uh, to access our bank account. So it has to be four digits long. So one, two, three, four digits. Uh, how many possible pin numbers are there? What is the probability of somebody just guessing my pin number? So let's assume that I can choose between uh, any value between zero and nine for my pin number. So that means that this value, this first digit, can take on uh, any one of 10 numbers. This one, any number of 10 numbers, 10 numbers here, 10 numbers here. So each of these digits um, can be any one of 10 values. So the number of permutations here, I'm gonna use this formula. I have uh, 10 possible options uh, and I'm choosing four of them, right? How many different ways can I, can I select four values out of a possible 10? So here, this is just going to be then 10,000. There's 10,000 possible pin numbers, uh, four digit pin numbers, if I can use the numbers zero through nine, and I can use any of those numbers more than once. So what is the probability of somebody guessing my pin? Well, there's gonna be one in 10,000. Right? Pretty small uh, probability, so 1.0001. Uh, so pretty slim chance that somebody is just gonna randomly guess my, my pin number. Now, this is an example of a permutation because the order here matters, right? If this is five, three, six, seven, uh, the numbers have to be specifically in that order uh, to work. When, when you hear about the, the comparison between permutations and combinations, the big difference is that in combinations, the order doesn't matter. So if pin numbers were based on combinations, or like, you know, we call them combination locks that we put on our locker, but really they should be called permutation locks uh, because the order of those numbers matters. If it were truly a combination lock, then somebody could enter into my locker or enter into my bank account using these same values, but in a different order they would all be considered the same thing if we were speaking in terms of combinations. In terms of permutations, these two are not considered the same, uh, and so of course only one of those will work. Okay, so there's, uh, there's our first part. So here I have uh, 10,000, and the probability uh, of getting in is uh, one in 10,000. How many, how many possible pin numbers would there be if I could only use each number once? So what that means is that, again, I can choose between zero and nine, but it means that for the first digit, I can choose one of these 10 options, but once I've chosen a value, let's say I choose three, three no longer exists as an option for the second value. So now I only have nine options. So I pick, let's say, a two. So now three and two no longer exist. So here now I only have seven, uh, <laughs> where's, where's my math? So here I only have now eight options, and here I only have seven options left from which to choose. So two different ways that we can calculate this. Given that we're working with small numbers of, uh, of options, small, small data, um, small choices, I'm only picking four out of 10. Uh, here I can do the, the calculation, simply 10 times nine times eight times seven. And so this is going to give me 10 times nine times eight times seven. So 5,040, 5,040. So I have 5,040 options. So a probability of somebody guessing it is going to be one in 5,040. So still 
pretty slim possibilities, but eliminating the option to reuse uh, a number significantly almost cuts the, the number of possibilities uh, in half here. Now, using the formula that you may see in your stats course, the number of permutations, so that's n factorial divided by n minus little n factorial. So this would be 10 factorial divided by 10 minus 4, right? I'm choosing four values. So this is 6 factorial. So this is just simply 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 6 factorial. So that's 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. All of this is cancelled out by all of this. And here I'm left with 10 times 9 times 8 times 7, which is exactly what we have right here. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, the, the formulas are usually what I find throw students off. So in this case, when you're working with small numbers, uh, it's relatively easy to, to get through the math. This formula is much more useful uh, you know, if I'm looking at the number of permutations, if I have 3,672 and I'm choosing, um, I don't know, 51. All right, if the numbers start to get big, then this formula becomes much more useful for us. Okay, moving on. So part B. So now we're going to look at alphanumeric passwords. So how does that change things? So this first one, how many possible passwords are available using numbers and lowercase letters? What's the probability of somebody guessing it? What if I could only use each number or letter once? So same kind of, same types of calculations now. So I have a password, must be five characters. So I'm choosing five. Uh, how many options do I have? Well, if I can choose zero to nine, that's 10. Plus, I can choose between A to Z. I think I'm only looking at lowercase letters here. So there's another 24. So I have 34 different values that I can choose from now for each um, digit or in within my alphanumeric password. So this is, I have five, one, two, three, four, five uh, digits in my password. For each one, if, uh, Let's see, possibly probably guessing, so I can reuse the password for the first one. Sorry, reuse the characters. So at 34, 34, 34 in each of these. So that's going to be 34 raised to the power of 5. So if I can reuse all of my values, 34 to the power of 5. Wow, 52,521,875. Let me just make sure that I copied that out right. 52,521,875. So, a lot. 52,521,875. What's the probability of somebody guessing it? Well, it's one out of 52 let's call it 52 and a half million. So probability of somebody guessing my password when it's alphanumeric uh, is tiny, uh, al almost impossible, I would say. What if I could only use each number and letter uh, once? So now I have 34 times 33 times 32 times 31 times 30 which is, using our formula, this is 34 factorial divided by 34 minus 5 factorial. And so this is going to be, let's see, 34 factorial. I'm not even going to write that out. Divided by 34 minus 5 factorial equals 33,390,000. So 33 million 390 and 720. 
Okay, and probability of somebody guessing it would be 1 in 33, let's say 33.4 million. Moving on, how many possible passwords are available if I can use numbers, lowercase, and uppercase passwords? So now, again, I still have, let's come down here, five values in my password. But now this can be either a zero to a nine, so that's 10, plus lowercase a to z, so 24, plus uppercase a to z, that's another 24. So there's 48, so that's 58 possible values in any of these positions. And so our first calculation, now I have 58 possible values. I'm choosing five of them. We're gonna get into some large numbers here. 58 to the power of five, 656 million. 656 million, let's be precise, 356, 768. So probability of somebody guessing that is getting exceedingly, uh, exceedingly small. Now again, if I could only use each number once, so now I'm looking at uh, this formula, n factorial, n minus little n factorial. So here I have uh, 58 factorial divided by n minus little n, 58 minus 5. Okay, uh, 58 factorial divided by, open those brackets, 58 minus 5 factorial equals 549, 549, 853, that was a 920, I'll check just to be sure, good. So 549853920. Probability of somebody guessing it, uh, still pretty small. But of course, when we can no longer use uh, any value more than once, then the number of options are, are reduced. Okay, so here's how permutations work uh, in your emails and your, your uh, any of your passwords, right? So there's a significant increase in security when you start to incorporate small letters and capital letters, and then if you can add symbols and things in there, it gets uh, even larger um, very quickly. Okay, so uh, hopefully this helps in calculating these permutations. Okay, thank you for watching.